Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live stream. Um, today, our professional trader Jay will talk about his market view and also share with, share with you guys some of his trading strategies with our structured products. So um, without further ado, let's welcome Jay. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for being here today. Can you guys see or can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, nice, perfect. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for all joining today. Um, happy to be here and uh, share some of my thoughts about the 2022 uh, year for crypto and uh, just investing in general, as well as my outlook for 2023 and some strategies that I have been implementing in the market and just uh, a general overview of some of our products. Um, why don't we start off by what everyone can, uh, can everyone just put in the chat what everyone is most interested in, either the outlook for 2023 or specifically trading strategy that I have been implementing. And I see you can just tell me what people say because I can't see the chat. I don't think so. Yes, yes. Actually, wait, I can see a little bit. So one vote for strategy, <laughs> two votes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, people people just want to see people just want to see strategy. They just want to they just want to learn. Okay, okay. So strategies. Okay, we can. Strategy, yep, yep, strategy. yep. People, we can quickly go over the market recap, and then we will spend more time on strategies. And if you guys, um, if you guys have any questions, you can just uh, put it in the chat, and we can make it kind of interactive, especially when we get the strategies part. If you guys have any questions, uh, I can go more in depth, and yeah, just cater to whatever you guys want to learn. Okay, I'm going to get started. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. All right, can you see my screen, Sia? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So, quick, uh, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to go over uh, a quick recap, 2022. And then go into my outlook for 2023, going to some technical analysis, uh, and then go into some trades, which is uh, the strategy portion. Or we can just skip the charts, we'll do charts later, and then we'll go to strategies. Um, so first, yep, let, we can go into the 2022 recap as the new year just started. Uh, the main... The main theme for investments, uh, either traditional equities or cryptocurrencies in 2022 was inflation. So inflation caused by uh, supply chain issues, COVID, and then the war between Russia and Ukraine, you know, has affected, basically shaken the whole world's uh, global economy. Inflation for food, food prices have been up 10%. Energy prices, we don't even have to talk about. Uh, that's up like 30 to 50 percent this year. Now it's coming down. Services, new vehicles, everything has been getting expensive. And with the inflation up, consumers have less money to spend on other things. There's less margins for companies, less margins, uh, less goods, less free cash to spend for consumers. So inflation generally acts as a drag on investments. So this is bad for stocks, this is bad for cryptocurrencies, and this is bad for the economy in general. So that has been, so that leads into uh, interest rate hikes. So how does the Federal Reserve fight inflation, right? The Federal Reserve increases interest rate, so that lessens demand. And as you can see, 
with the big blue line right here, this cycle, uh, this has been the fastest increase in interest rates the Fed has done since nine, the 1980s, right? So the faster we increase interest rates, the slower the economy grows. And this is uh, very unprecedented because of the speed that they have raised interest rates. So interest rates basically kill tech stocks and kill cryptocurrency because you get um, risk-free returns when you invest in bonds. While if you invest in technology stocks or cryptocurrencies, you're taking in a big amount of risk because they do not have cash flow because you're investing for the future because they grow very quickly, but they might not be profitable. Uh, so inflation, what the Fed did, raise interest rates to fight that inflation. And we can see that kind of working out recently as uh, this uh, inflation rate has been dropping because people just uh, cannot borrow as much, more, as much money due to the high interest rates. Uh, so this is the yield curve, basically the bonds, American uh, Treasury bonds. This is the three-month bond and the 10-year bond. So what you have to know here, you don't really have to understand this, it's just uh, whenever the 10-year bond yield is less than the three uh, is the three months yield, this has led to a recession basically every time uh, in the past uh, two decades. So basically in 2008, 2000, 1990s, whenever this has shown, as we can see right here, whenever this crosses the zero line, a recession has followed in the next one to one and a half years. Uh, and, uh, you know, as everyone has said, everyone has talked about 2023 will probably be the year that the recession comes. Uh, and m most of the major banks are forecasting this, you know, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, everyone is expecting this. And of course, this will be Bitcoin's uh, first recession if you don't count COVID. Uh, so for cryptocurrencies, this will be a big test to see how they react. Uh, because of inflation, high interest rates, and things like that, most people turn away from risky assets like Bitcoin, tech stocks, and go into assets that generate cash flow. So companies like Coca-Cola, uh, Pepsi, uh, real estate companies that generate short-term cash flow or healthcare companies, uh, they are safer because as interest rate rises, uh, what people do is they discount the future uh, cash flow in to present day, which decreases the present value. So tech stocks, they're known for having tremendous growth rates, 100% growth, 200% growth, right? Like Tesla or Amazon or Facebook. But as interest rate goes up, the present value of that future cash flow is decreased. So Bitcoin, you know, is always compared to tech, uh, tech stocks is down 62% just this year and tech stocks are down 32%. But as you can see, Coca-Cola is actually up 7% on the year. So there, so whenever this type of economic uh, environment is in play, people tend to turn, basically get out of these risky stocks and uh, cryptocurrencies and turn into these safer, uh, more short-term cash flow stocks. Uh, and of course, the declining prices of cryptocurrencies, Solana is down 92%. Basically, the major cryptocurrencies are all down from 50% to 92%. That is a crazy amount of declines within just one year, right? And of course, we can't forget all the bankruptcies and drama that have occurred this year. Declining prices lead to uh, bankruptcies and blow up of firms. So just a quick summarize. Everything started with the decreasing price of Bitcoin, and that caused the people to attack Terra Luna. And then as a bank run happened on Luna, that caused the bankruptcy of Celsius, BlockFi, and 3 Arrow Capital. Uh, and this directly also affected FTX, which also went bankrupt. And then now Digital Currency Group is they are they the next in line? We will have to see within the next couple of months. Uh, so obviously, this has been a a year full of turmoil for the crypto market as the, all these large firms, these billion dollar unicorns um, that were leading the market were actually just over leveraged and taking crazy amounts of risk, right? So with uh, there's two ways of looking at this. Of course, having these crypto companies 
uh, going bankrupt is bad for overall, but it could be seen as a good thing because it is washing the toxic leverage that is in the crypto market um, out going forward. So going forward in the future, we can build a more healthy foundation for all cryptocurrencies in general. So I'm definitely looking forward to the next upcoming years. Uh, one bright spot in the crypto market for 2022 is stable coins. While it's not sexy, stable coins, obviously, you don't generate, you're not going to make 100% or even 2 3% on stable coins. But this shows uh, there is very high uh, adoption for cryptocurrencies in general. So stable coins, um, stable coin transactions has increased. I don't know the exact number, but it has basically increased uh, 50 fold from 2018 to now. So people transacting on chain with let's say tether usdc busd whatever the case is uh they have been sending trillions of dollars in volume uh on on the blockchain and this is actually greater than the transaction volume for big the biggest uh, credit card companies like uh, american express uh, not visa visa is still in the lead but things like american express wells fargo and things like that so stable point that's seen very high adoption and of course this uh, relates to cryptocurrency as a whole getting adopted right uh, the last things we're going to look at is uh, the miners in 2022 so miners seem to never learn their lessons uh, most of the miners after they mine their bitcoin they don't hedge their exposure and they don't sell their bitcoin so for example core science uh, core scientific did not sell any bitcoin uh, until the crash of luna Right. So after prices went down 40%, uh, Core Scientific started selling their Bitcoins because they could not um, fund their operations anymore. And uh, Core, Core Scientific, one of the biggest uh, miners in the United States, one of their public miners, biggest public miners, uh, they are looking into bankruptcy right now, as well as uh, multiple other miners as well. So um, this has been a very big uh source of supply for bitcoin so this has caused the headwinds for um the price because as miners they hold one of the you know biggest troughs of bitcoins as they're selling bitcoin prices going up is very unlikely right so we will continue to monitor this in 2023 so here now we're moving on to the 2020 um our outlook for 2023 for the cryptocurrency market so the aftermath of 2022, right? So with the high interest rates globally uh, and lower demand, so housing prices, this is not directly related to cryptocurrency, but this is just the um, effects on the market in general. So housing prices face large decline because of high interest rates. People cannot afford to pay uh, the interest rate on houses and spending on um, expensive items like uh, refrigerators, cars will also decline as um, consumer spending, consumer um, consumer uh, savings and spending is uh, under pressure due to the high interest rates. And our forecast for 2023 is there will be a mild recession. So uh, corporate companies will have um, lower, maybe a decrease in earnings, right? And so we, they probably have, will experience a negative EPS growth as well as um, so crypto, how does this affect crypto? Crypto is just along for the macro, right? Right. If um, people don't have enough money to spend, if people are unemployed, then no one is going to be spending their money or investing in cryptocurrencies. So uh, so what we are expecting is just a further decline into the early 2023. But then after that decline, we will probably just go consolidate, go sideways in the crypto market. And this will probably follow. Uh, however, the stock market, traditional equities, will um, go. So the Fed in 2023. This has been a main focus in 2022. Every Fed meeting, everyone became a macro analyst. Uh, interest rates were in focus, inflation. But we forecast that this is not going to be as important in 2023 because uh, from March to November we are expected to just keep interest rates flat and inflation uh, is already decreasing at a pretty good rate. So inflation and uh, interest rate decisions will 
I expect will not be the main focus for 2023. Of course, there will still be um, there. It will still be a important thing to keep in mind toward the last half of the year because if the Fed does pivot and start decreasing rates before 2020, uh, before 2024, we could see that act as a catalyst for higher cryptocurrency prices uh, in general. So what should we focus on for 2023? For 2023, some things I will be focused on is unemployment, consumer spendings, um, minor bankruptcies, as well as the, uh, especially the digital currency group um, potential bankruptcy, because if digital currency group um, might go bankrupt, they have a, they, ha they hold lots of Bitcoins that could be liquidated and uh, sold to pay back uh, to pay back their loans that they um, t uh, took out, right? So these are the most important things to focus on. Uh, I know consumer spending and unemployment, these are more traditional equity stuff. But like I said before, if you are unemployed, if consumer spending slows, um, then these things will directly affect cryptocurrencies because people will not have enough money to even um, get by buy food, pay for gas, how will they be investing in cryptocurrencies and equities, right? So this is one, so these two are major things to focus on for 2023. If you are seeing a raise in unemployment and then consumer spending drop down, then crypto probably will likely follow it downwards. Um, so so okay, so uh, 2023, like we said before, uh, we will be focused on the upcoming uh, recession, right? So the labor force is still tight. Unemployment should not get out of control, but it will still likely see uh, uptick. Uh, growth will slow, but should recover in, by 2024 because we are expecting this to be a mild recession. Um, so we are also expecting so for crypto to trade inside of a range after a final dip, and we will go into that right now. So we're right now we're gonna go look at some bottoming signals in the crypto market, especially for Bitcoin. So long-term holders of Bitcoin, this is on-chain holders of Bitcoin that has been active one plus years ago. So this is considered the people who do not care about the fluctuations in the price of Bitcoins. And uh, as you can see from this chart with the orange highlighted part, that is the percentage of Bitcoin addresses that has not been active in one year. And this is at around uh, 65%. And as you can see on this chart, as the, as you can see on this chart, basically in 2018, as the prices declined, you can see long-term holders uh, increasing because they're not price sensitive and they are accumulating Bitcoin. Um, as you can see, the price increased the mo at the mo in the most recent bull market in 2021, you can see this cohort of long-term holders, you can say their whales or their institutions, whatever you want to call them, they are decreasing their holdings. So they're becoming active and sending or spending their Bitcoins. Uh, so of course, right now we can see an increase in the amount of Bitcoin holders um, as uh, indicating that this could be close to a bottom for the cryptocurrency market. Um, this chart basically shows the realized price of short-term holders. So anyone holding Bitcoin for under six months is considered a short-term holder. And uh, the realized price is just the uh, price of the average price of people holding Bitcoin ever since the inception of Bitcoin back in uh, back when Satoshi released the white paper. And um, as you can see on this chart, highlighted in the purple is when the short-term holders, so the short-term holders of Bitcoin actually has a cheaper price than the average price of Bitcoin holders throughout uh, the lifetime of Bitcoin. And whenever, as you can see in the past, whenever this uh, purple, whenever we reach this purple area, it has indicated a bottom for Bitcoin. Now, it doesn't mean that right now we are at the bottom for Bitcoin, but this could represent that within the near future, we could be getting very close to a bottom. As you can see, this um, purple area has only happened uh, four times in the past, and each one coincided with the bottom 
of Bitcoin prices. Um, here is another sign of uh, that we are nearing a bottom. This is the Bitcoin energy gravity model by Blockware Solutions. So um, the blue line basically represents how much it costs a miner to mine a Bitcoin. And whenever the gray line, which is the price of Bitcoin, gets too far away from the cost of production, uh, we can basically say Bitcoin is overpriced because the price of Bitcoin is so far above the cost of producing one Bitcoin, right? That means there's this much profit opportunity for people mining. However, when prices come down and basically reach the cost of production, it has coincided with market bottoms in the past, if you, as you can see in 2019, 2015, and 2021, when the price came down and reached the cost of production per Bitcoin, uh, price has bottom and a bull rally has uh, followed it in the past scenarios. Here is just the chart of the average miners production cost for per mining machine. And um, as you can see, if, uh, on average, let's say industrial miner has the electricity cost of 0 0.05 uh, of 5 cents. Uh, the production cost on average will be around 30, 12 to 13,000. And in previous bull markets or in previous bear markets, uh, we have not reached, we did not reach a bottom until most, until miners are under pressure. So that means bankruptcies, forced selling of Bitcoins, and just a general uh, forced selling of uh, their mining machines even, right? And uh, this will not happen until Bitcoin price falls under the miners' cost of production, so that is around the twelve to thirteen thousand range, and um, we believe that could also be the potential real bottom of crypto for this cycle. So this is a chart I had posted a while back, and um, but prices have not prices have basically went sideways um, for the past couple of months, so it doesn't. So this chart will still be accurate. Um, so after the Luna collapse, there was a Luna contagion that, you know, forced the bankruptcies of Three Arrow, BlockFi, and companies like that. So from the Luna collapse, we had a 35% drawdown in the price of Bitcoin. And then the contagion from the Luna collapse was another 35% drawdown. And of course, we just had the FTX bankruptcy, and that um, caused Bitcoin to draw down 25%. And then we're expecting maybe... We don't know what the cont uh, contagion is going to be, but maybe Digital Currency Group, uh, their bankruptcy and forced selling, forced selling of their Bitcoins and things like that, that could cause, that could be a possible contagion to take Bitcoin um, to the 12,000 to 13,000 target that we had described earlier. So this would be another 25% drawdown in price. And we can skip, we can go back to the charts. Let's go into some strategy. Hey, Jay. Um, yeah. Before we go to strategies, um, like, 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 um, there's uh, one viewers who asked a question about like, when do you think the um, unemployment rate number will go up? Um, I expect unemployment to be going up uh, basically qu uh, second quarter, probably Q2 of this year so like march to march to in the march to november area because uh, unemployment usually lags um interest rate decisions and uh and basically um indicators that we look at such as services uh pmi so we already see that um uh, there are a lot of layoffs from the big tech companies uh, but we are also seeing like services PMI fall under the 50 line, which means technically we are in a contraction and that we are not expanding. So, but these indicators are leading indicators and unemployment tends to lag that. So I'm expecting within the next six months, unemployment to tick up. And uh, give me one second. Let me get my charger. My laptop's kind of out of battery. Okay. <laughs> So let me um, summarize um, J 
Jay's view um, for the next year. So basically, um, the most important two indicators that you um, that is uh, most useful for your um, trading is the consumer spending indicators and the unemployment rate. So these two, if if like if the consumer spending goes down, so it means um, maybe the market price will also go down because the people there will be less people trading, and also um, if the unemployment rate goes up, um, there will be. Um, more people um, that are unemployed. So we will also expect a, a low amount of trades at that time. So just keep an eye on those two indicators, as Jay said. All right, I am back. Sorry about that. I had to charge my laptop. <laughs> okay, cool. Is there, if there's no other questions, we can go into some trades uh, slash strategies that I have been using. Um, so basically, there are two strategies, and we can also combine them into one that I will be going over. So this strategy, right? So this one is simply if for people who are holding Bitcoin, this is just the, the yield generating strategy for Bitcoin holders. Um, so for this scenario, for example, right now, Bitcoin prices are coming up, right? So Bitcoin's at 17,000, 17,200, whatever it is right now. As Bitcoin prices pump, uh, one thing you have to remember is during the bear market, there will be multiple um, there will be multiple bear market rallies, but but you don't want to get long during these bear market rallies, right? Because uh, these are actually opportunities to get short. The bear market lasts anywhere from two, anywhere from one year to three, three years, right? So don't expect us to be in a bull market. Don't chase when prices are going up, but instead you want to get on the short side. Uh, but for this specific strategy, this is for the people who are just holding Bitcoin in general, and you are a long-term holder. So for this strategy, as Bitcoin prices are going up, you want to use the dual investment product, investing Bitcoin, to earn yield. So for example, this is one of the orders I'll be placing. Uh, with the Bitcoin dual investment product, uh, within... 10 uh with uh, with a 10-day duration and uh strike price is 18,500. uh this is what i would be using so basically this means that i can sell my bitcoin at 18,500 if prices get there within 10 days if not i would take the free yield that is generated so this will return 20 percent annualized or 0 0.6 percent uh within the 10 days that we will be using this order so for this strategy, you basically every time prices go up and at a good amount and when it reaches resistance. So for example, let me look at the chart. I don't hold on. Let me share, share my screen. Okay, awesome. You can see my screen, right? Awesome. So, for example, in this scenario right here, uh, right now Bitcoin's at seventeen thousand four hundred, and um, my expectation is within ten days we're not going to be breaking over the resistance at eighteen thousand. Uh, let's just call this five hundred, right? The previous uh, resistance that we had hit back in December fourteenth. So, in this type of scenario, in this type of scenario. I will just choose the resistance as the price I want to sell at, which is 18,500 and place this, this dual investment order. So in this case, if Bitcoin does reach 18,500, I'm going to be locking in that 10% profit as well as the interest generated from the order. Uh, and we want to implement a strategy like this is because as I said before, in there will be a, uh, 
bear market rallies, but most of those will be shorted into and uh, institutions and smart investors will be shorting that rally instead of getting along like most retail. So there, uh, the benefits of this is you will earn uh, interest to offset the cost of holding your Bitcoin because if you're holding this Bitcoin for two, three years. Um, you don't want to be just holding it and not make and not making any money, right? You can hold this Bitcoin and earn interest on top of that. So with this strategy, it has pretty high yield, 20% annualized. But as prices get closer to 18,000, if you place this order later, you will even get a higher yield up to 40 to 50% annualized. And uh, there's a good chance that you will sell your Bitcoin for a profit. But the key here is we are expecting price to go down uh, to go down more further into the year. So you can buy your Bitcoin back cheaper if we do have a farther rally than expected. Uh, so the second one, of course, is if you have uh, if you have cash sitting on the sidelines, you're waiting for the bottom, right? So the scenario for this is if prices are falling toward 15, uh, 15,000 again, so back to the lows. And uh, in this type of scenario, no one knows if it's going to bounce from 15,000 or break below, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what anyone says. No one knows for sure what price will do. So for this strategy, as prices are coming down, you want to be placing a dual investment order for a price that is way lower than uh, what the price is at. So, for example, uh, we think Bitcoin's bottom will be around 12,000 to 14,000. So you can place a 14,000 dual investment, uh, dual investment order with a longer term period because you want to be buying Bitcoin at these bottom prices anyways. Um, of course, this will generate a higher return because you are placing it for a longer time period. So for example, this order, we will be placing it for almost one month and a half, and it will return 0.8% uh, interest for that order, and that's 7% annualized. However, we don't wanna be placing this order right now because prices are still high, right, at 17,000. But if prices are coming down to 15,500, then that's when you wanna be placing this order. When you place that order at that time period, your yield will be extremely high, maybe 20% to 30%, even 40%, right? So this, so your return on investment will be very high as well. Uh, so you want to be doing this, especially in the bear market, because um, you're earning interest on your cash. Instead of just holding your stable coins, USDC, USDT, whatever you have, you will be earning interest while holding your money. You don't want your money sitting there doing nothing. And of course, this also offers you a chance to buy Bitcoin at lower prices and you earn yield while this is happening, right? So you can combine this into a sample strategy. So this is a strategy I used uh, in, from November to uh, the end of the year, basically. And um, it has, okay, so not one month, around one month and a half, it returned 3.5%. So those, so those, um, yields that you get from the structured product really do add up. And especially within this range, if you're not buying the low, selling the high, buying the low, selling the high, which most people, uh, which most retail investors, investors cannot do, then this strategy is a safer, more easier to implement, and also it returns pretty good profits. So for example, uh, like I said, when prices are coming down low right here, 15, uh, well, this for Ethereum actually. So when prices are coming down to 1,100, 1,150, I'm placing a very uh, far away order to buy Ethereum even lower. So maybe 900, maybe 1,000, right? And each time this is returning me um, maybe 0.5% profit. And I just do this over and over and over and over and over again, right? As long as Ethereum is trading within a range. So up here, when the prices are going up, I, have, I, was told, I had some Ethereum. I would be selling a covered call, which is uh, our dual investment, the first uh, order I cover with maybe a target price of 14000 And that's also returning around 20%, 30% annualized. So you just want to be using short duration dual investment products, and you want to be keep on repeating this. Uh, one benefit of using short term, short duration products is also because if you use like a 50 day product and like a very close strike, let's say 1000, Ethereum could possibly tank to $800 and then you would be trapped 
buying Ethereum at 1,000. However, if you're using like a short-term seven-day duration, the probability of Ethereum going under 1,000 is lower. Even if it does, you have a you have a chance to uh, sell your Ethereum um, close to your strike cost. Um, so, of course, this is uh, some longer-term results for the dip buying, for the dual investment dip buying, investing in stable coins. Uh, this is uh, one of our users. He invested basically 100,000, and he got 5,000 in interest. That's almost uh, it's almost 5% in three months' time. And this is just for people who don't who don't really have time and who just want to earn some interest. You can literally place this order and forget about it for three months. Of course, you could get executed and you could be buying uh, Bitcoin at the price you put. But uh, if we are going the sideways market or if Bitcoin fell to, let's say, 14,000 and you believe that is the bottom and you just want to earn interest, you can place a 12,000 order and you can earn 5% in three months uh, with effectively very low risk. Um, so... You can also, we also have came out with the copy trade feature as uh, everybody probably knows from the home screen. Um, so this specific strategy, I really like. Uh, this is basically what I talked about, right? Buying low, selling high with structured product. So for this one, they have automated it for you. So they will use a Bitcoin by the dip with a price of 16,000 to buy Bitcoin. And they will just repeat this uh, repeat this over and over again until prices hit 16,000 and you get executed. And when it does get executed, you will switch over to a covered game product selling, setting a selling price of 18,000. And then it will just uh, replace this order, generating you yield over and over again until it sells your Bitcoin at 18,000. So with this one, at least, there's no need for you to set it up yourself. You can just simply go to the app's homepage and press copy. And of course, you can see the popularity of the bot with how much asset uh, other users have invested. And you can see the return um, since the bot has started. So with the current performance, the bot is expected to generate 18% annualized, uh, which is not bad considering you know all cryptocurrencies are down 50, 60%. Uh, one also one strategy that I like to use um, that I see a good future for going into 2023 is the Bitcoin growth bot. So this one you can copy as well. Uh, so the theory behind this is that Ethereum should outperform Bitcoin and take away uh, dominance from Bitcoin because Ethereum is uh, the smart contract coin. It has uh, plenty of development and plenty of use cases versus Bitcoin where, where it's just um, more of the digital gold, right? You're just, people are holding it just for a hedge to inflation, um, for growth possibilities, and it is the original cryptocurrency. But I see more development opportunities for Ethereum, especially after the merge. Uh, this chart shows that Ethereum could technically be deflationary depending on the fees and transaction on the uh, blockchain. Uh, before the merge, Ethereum was inflationary, producing coins for uh, for one because miners need uh, producing coins as rewards for miners. Uh, but now, since uh, the proof of stake, the Ethereum supply has basically been flat uh, over the past uh three months so this is a very good reason uh for the btc growth bot because if ethereum outperforms bitcoin uh then you will be basically stacking more bitcoins uh so this so this bot you can copy and this bot is very good for people who want to make profit in bitcoins because um um, some people just like to stack their Bitcoin and that's how they calculate their profit. And this bot is uh, basically made for that. Grow, growing your B, uh, Bitcoin holdings while arbitraging the price between Ethereum and Bitcoin. And uh, also the last strategy that we will look at is, I believe it's the last strategy. Yeah, the last strategy we will be looking at is the flying wheel strategy. Uh, this one is a high-risk strategy, but as uh, it is in cryptocurrency and trading, high risk comes with high reward. 
So for the fly and wheel strategy, it is perfect for a choppy sideways market because um, we will be selling extremely close strike um, dual investment and cover game products to generate that high yield. So for this product, um, this was a while ago, but uh, during that time period, it returned five to 8% in two weeks time, right? So that is way better than the 3% every two months that um, the strategy I talked about before was generating. But this one also has very high risk because if the market dumps and you get stuck in uh, Bitcoin because it is at a, because you're buying at a very close strike, then you will face a lot of, um, you will face a lot of um, just a, a decrease in value of your holdings. So that could just wipe out the five to 8% you made very quickly. Uh, however, this is a very popular bot. Uh, there, When I took this screenshot, there was like 500,000 USDD invested, but I think right now it's upwards of 1.5 million invested into this uh, bot. So this is very popular, but just uh, be aware of the risks. Um, so that is the four strategies that I have for you guys. And uh, we could also go into, we could go into some questions right now, or we could go over some technical analysis and some charts, depending on what you guys want to do. Okay, so um, there's uh, several questions, Jay. Um, one of them is um, in, regarding the trailing DCA, the trading bot. So, mm -hmm. Sergio said, when large market falls occur, remains without closing the cycle for too long. So do you have any improvement in mind so um, that panics can perform? Can you repeat that? Yes. So the trailing DCA bot, when large market falls occur, remains mm -hmm. without closing the cycle for too long. Do you have any improvement in mind? Mm, the trailing DCA bot with large falls in the market. Um, so for the trailing DCA bot, at least um, one, it, it is very, it is very more of a long term strategy because uh, if the market falls from sixteen thousand to twelve thousand with no bounces, you're just going to be stuck in your Bitcoin or, well, I'll talk about Bitcoin. You're going to be stuck in your Bitcoin position, right? There's really nothing much you can do in that type of scenario. For example, if you had a DCA bot open, uh, when FTX went bankrupt from 20,000 to 15,000, uh, you're just going to be buying all the way down, right? And if you're not setting enough, um, enough orders, you could, let's say, stop at 16,000. And then prices go to 15,000. And then when it bounces up, it might not even cover, uh, it might not even be at your cost of entry. So that is definitely a risk, but that is that is a risk you have to take with the DCA bot. Uh, we have implemented the RSI indicator with the DCA bot. And in the f upcoming future, we will be in, um, integrating different influencer strategies, different influencer indicators that you can look at and copy. Uh, so basically, instead of just DCAing downwards every time Bitcoin falls, let's say whatever is five percent you chose or or two percent, you're gonna be it has to be if Bitcoin falls two percent, and this indicator has to show that it is bottoming before the DCA buys. So that so you can look forward to that in the future. So instead of just a kind of um, kind of dumb strategy where you're buying every 2%, every 2%, every 2%. Instead, we're going to be implementing a indicator with um, buying as prices fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay. And um, Arka asked another question uh, for you. So um, which pair is more stable and profitable? Um, ETH BTC to USDT pair or ETH to BTC pair? For which one? For um, dual investment? Like just in general for the two pair, which one is stable? Uh, um, um, 
it, 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 I feel like that honestly depends on where you are getting in. Then, then the you know, then your returns will vary. So I would use ETH USDT for uh, well, I mean, I guess you're talking about trading, but I would focus on using ETH for dual investment because um, ETH is more volatile. So uh, naturally, you will get higher yields on ETH uh, for dual investment products, and uh, just and of course ETH moves along with BTC, but it just has bigger up moves and bigger down moves. Um, ETH BTC pair is good be, uh, just for the my, uh, Bitcoin miner bot I talked about because as uh, you know the crypto team, cryptocurrency market develops, we feel like there's going to be a lot more development activity on the Ethereum network uh, uh, just because it is the first smart contract and there's so much support for it. So we feel like there's going to be a da- adoption for Ethereum, which is going to take dominance away from Bitcoin. So it's, so the ETH BTC pair for the grid trading bot is, uh, is very popular among our users. And I personally use that one as well. So there's another question. Um, why there's not a direct short position as all indicators are aligned for a price drop? Does the BDCs can be an option for strategies? Why can't why can we uh, why is there no short available? Is that what the question is? Yes, whether there's not a direct short position. Uh, we have the leverage tokens that you can buy to basically be short so instead of like uh just directly shorting you can just get the token that represents the price of bitcoin going down which is like the same thing uh, we just chose to do it that way but that is not available in the united states but i'm assuming everyone came from the global app anyways um, so you can short bitcoin you can short ethereum you can short solana and things like that through the leverage token Yeah, so for example, the Sushi 2S USDT. So this is, I think this is the short, right? 2S. Yeah, this is the, this is this, this is the short token. So if you buy this token, you basically have short exposure to Sushi. So we just have these, uh, token, we just have these opposite tokens, uh, that represents short or longs for, um, for like, you know, for all these, all these crypto pairs. So that's so that's what we do, and like I said before, I do suggest um, the strategy in the bear market should be shorting the pumps, because um, the general trend of the market is down. So you should not be fighting the trend. For example, for example, if you short, you know, during this uh, during this uh, bear market rally or just oversold rally, we hit. 18,300, right? 18,300 was a previous resistance and you should just be shorting into these rallies because if you're wrong and this uh, reclaims support, you can simply get out and take a small loss. Um, but if you're if you're going long chasing, chasing places like here, then you can, you can take a very quick loss as you can see prices reverse to the downside very quickly. Uh, yeah, I hope that... Uh, was a, yes. A good Thank you, Jay. Um, do you recommend these strategies in the current market? Which strategy? The one um, I just talked the, about? The, yeah, the short, the option short. Uh, the option short. The the BDC the BTC short strategy. Yes. Um, uh, in the current, I mean, I do recommend it. This that's this is what I have been doing on on any on any big rallies to previous support turned into resistance, I will get short because uh, you have very, you have a very, um, you have very small risk right here, right? Let's say you're mm-hmm. short at 25,000, we go to 26,000, great, you can get out, take like a 1% loss, not a big deal, right? But if you're right, look how fast the price goes down to the downside. This is like almost a 20% profit if you went short right here. And maybe these small ones you don't short at, that's fine. But like this one was a very clear short right here. We pump up, test the previous support, turn into resistance. 
and you short here. If you're wrong, you get out. But if you're right, prices quickly drop 20%, 10 to 20%. So yes, I do recommend that strategy in uh, the current market. Yes, thank you. And also there's one more question. Um, when will you implement automated leverage trading for stable coins, USDT, BUSD, or other stable coins? Um, automated leverage trading. Um, I'm pretty sure they have that now. Like the leverage trading bots, look, they have a leverage grid trading bot. So they actually, uh, they actually do have that now mm -hmm. or even margin grid bot borrow funds to run the grid bot so i'm not yes sure yes um when do you think it's a better time to do this oh oh when do i think is a good time to implement uh to start yeah. it um yeah okay okay i thought he said when they, they were going to be put in um <laughs> uh per personally personally i would um I would, if you're doing specifically leverage trading bot, I would wait and I would try to wait as much as I can for the, for, for the, for what I expect to be the final dip before we hit a bottom, uh, like 17,000 right now, I don't think is the bottom, but like if I would maybe start a regular trading bot, just clear trading bot right here, just because nobody really knows where the bottom is going to be. We can all only assume based on the data we're given. So in this scenario, I would open a grid bot maybe right now, but only with let's say 10 to 20 percent of your money. But the, and uh, let the grid let the grid bot do its thing instead of this trading range. Instead of this trading range, grid bot probably does really well arbitraging your profit. But if we do get that, if we do get that big dump back down to 14,000 or 12,000, that is where I would be opening up the leverage grid trading bot. So if prices get to like around 13,000, 12,000, and if you see prices stabilize, uh, for example, over here, if you see this big drop and then you see prices kind of like doing this double bottom right here, doing this little consolidation, this is where I would open the leverage grid trading bot. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, is there any more questions? Cool. And if this is not, we can go over the charts also. And uh, if there is a question, you can just interrupt me. As I'm yes, so um, there's one more. Um, is the infinite grid bot the best option for grid bots? No, no, I wouldn't use the infinite grid bot. I would um, I would use the, the best one for beginners is going to be the uh moon bots the moon bots, the moon bots are very good for beginners because it's just a preset range it's back tested and it performs uh, relatively well uh but if you are specifically looking at grid bots the best option is also to just uh, create your own with your own parameters but i would use either the bitcoin moon bot or the uh just regular grid trading bot mm -hmm. thank you or if you're a little risky, you can use the margin grid bot, you know, take on some <laughs> some leverage. But um, I would I would uh, recommend people who are using grid bot to also try out the structured product because um, I, I feel like in the bear market, the grid bot does well if prices are just going sideways. For example, you know, in the previous three months period, for three, four months period, the grid bot did really well in this type of consolidation and as well as uh, this type of consolidation uh, but if you're using structured products uh it's safer and like if you had a grid bot open here right it would return good profits but then on this big dump you probably lose all your profits because you're holding bitcoin or whatever token pair you're holding and then this is just going to eat into all of your uh, profits with unrealized losses but if you're using if you're using, let's say, a structured product with uh, 15,000 or even 16,000 strike price, it doesn't matter if this dumps that heavily because it didn't reach your 15,000 strike price, right? So you will just be earning, it's not risk free, it will, you will just be earning uh, a low risk yield while, um, while the market dumps, right? And that is, that is what I'm really looking for in a bear market. Either you're shorting at the top when prices are pumping and then you just short into the bear market rallies or you're using structured product dip buying products near uh near the uh any in, 
not anywhere, but with like a farther out strike and a longer duration to just generate very low risk yields. That's the two strategies I would be looking at in the bear market. And that has worked in the past. And one more question. So um, are you going to add more coins to the flying wheel strategies? Um, so the flying wheel strategy, uh, we can definitely, we are looking to add more coins uh, to it. And just in general for structured products, like uh, we're thinking about adding Link, I think, maybe Sheep and things like that. But for the, for the flying, uh, for the flying, wheel strategy or the structure products in general is the yield on the altcoins are not the best right now. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe XRP and Matic has the best yields. So um, with altcoins, we we can, we can definitely add them, but the yields might not be attractive. Currently, currently the yields might not be attractive. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, Arka have another question. So he said, um, we have sideways bullish bots such as DC bot, Martingale. Um, is there any sideways or bearish bot? Uh, sideways is just we're trading bot. We're trading bots mm -hmm. best for sideways or using the, uh, high, uh, the high speed flying wheel. That's very good. That is very good for sideways. Like I said, when, um, during this time period, they opened, uh, uh, flying flying wheel bot this returned eight percent in two weeks grid bot's not going to return you eight percent in two weeks i mean okay it can if price if you started the grid bot right here and price is pumped up here right then you might be making eight percent but with the flying wheel bot you lock in the like like it's very good when the market is sideways so that's what i would recommend but of course be careful if prices dump you're going to be stuck in bitcoin and then you're just going to lose your profits so just make sure it's really sideways before you use it. And um, for bearish bot, I guess you can you can do the grid trading bot with a uh, with a short token. So it's basically you're just bot. You, you, it's basically a short a short grid trading bot. That's basically what it is. If you're gonna use a short leverage token, but um for sh uh, yeah, those are the two I can think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay. And uh, one more question. Um, what minimum investment would you recommend for the bot trading? Uh, for which one? Grid trading bot? Um, I, I guess for for all kinds of bots. Um, it really depends on what your, what, what, what your specific scenario is. For grid trading bot, like, it's, the return is going to be the same, right? If you're just trying it out, you have to throw in like, fifty dollars a hundred dollars just to try it out for fun and then you know once you get comfortable with it you can put in more money um for the grid trading bot myself i use like i said my strategy focuses more around the structured products um i'm i'm okay throwing in a thousand two thousand three thousand up to like ten twenty thousand dollars in the structured product order no problem as long as you know the as long as you know what the risk is right so uh, for structured product of course you're gonna just play around with it too throw in a hundred dollars on an order, get 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 your little one percent in interest, and then as you get more familiar with the product and know the risk of it, you can put in more and more money. So it doesn't really matter how much money money you put in, just whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and Bo Hang asked a question. Um, is there any tools I can use in the future to test my own parameters for great great bots or flying wheel bot to see my expected returns? Like some AI backtesting advisor. <laughs> um, in the in the future, in the future, we are going to be coming. We 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 are going to be implementing a advisor, right? So depending on the criteria you have. So let's say you think market will go down, but it goes. You can say, do you think the market will go down very fast or very slow? And depending on that and your view on the market, we we have a robo advisor to kind of give you options on what to invest in. Um, so that we do have something like that that's coming in the future. Um, for specific testing based on your parameters, I'm not sure. We have a we do have a AI uh, AI back testing for our grid trading bot. 
that is implemented on uh, just on the grid trading bot. But Shia, do you know if we can backtest? Yes. Um, so the robo advisor we're uh, we're gonna release um, will have the will will tell you guys the expected return, like expected loss or expected profit. Um, so I think that's kind of a backtesting. Um, mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Right for the pro for the product that it recommends, it will show you the percentage of times that it does not lose money and the percentage of times that it will lose money, and it will also show you how much money it loses when it is within um, that certain amount of times. Right. So that's a very good feature that's coming out. So definitely keep your eye out on that. That will help uh, the beginners and give you more of a historical. Uh, look back period when you're making your investment decisions. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, we can uh, go over some technical analysis <laughs> really quickly. If, I mean, yes. if uh, people are interested. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sounds good. If you have questions, just uh, you know, stop me. Let me know. Mm -hmm. So for Bitcoin, uh, we've been trading inside of this tight range uh, ever since November, right? Uh, right now, we are trading in the middle of the range, but we are trying to break up towards uh, resistance. So as, as, we, as I talked about before, we try to break through our uh, basically the upper range of our trading range. Uh, but of course, we got stuffed and this was a fake breakout so this time if we can reclaim 18,000 or 17,800 and stay above it then we actually have a good chance of coming up to testing 20,000 because usually we won't have two false uh, breakouts so if this time we can break over 18,000 and uh, actually hold up hold above it and not form some type of doji candle like this then we have a good chance of having a extended um bear market rally and of course the uh the indicators are look at support this like the ttm squeeze this uh this is going from basically bearish momentum to a bullish momentum expanding to the upside uh supporting the both pieces and macd is also supporting the both pieces So this is the same chart, just uh, more updated. So as you can see, we have this big uh, zone of resistance up here. And if we can get into this resistant, resistance zone and reclaim it and not and not um, fall back under within like a week, then we have a very good chance of coming up and text, testing the 20,000 resistance for Bitcoin. Uh, big, this is Bitcoin on the monthly chart. So we are looking at, so every candle is one month of price action. As you can see over here, uh, basically Bitcoin has broken through its, um, its uh, support line and we are now just stuck in the middle of nowhere. So the major support we see is at 12,000, which marks the previous bull market or, or previous bull slash bear market top. And as well as tested multiple times during the uh, 2018 to 2020 2018 2020 bear market so we see 12,000 as a strong buy area uh, but right now of course we are under we are under uh, resistance which is uh, 18,000 and we are far away from the 12,000 support so this area is very hard to trade but on a shorter time frame like I said if we reclaim the 18,000 we could see prices shoot back to 20,000 uh, for ethereum similar chart but Ethereum is stronger. It's actually already reclaiming the uh, trading range, uh, the top of the trading range. And this is also why the Ethereum, uh, the Bitcoin miner bot or the Ethereum Bitcoin pair uh, works because Ethereum is, uh, as we, as we, as I said before, is expected to outperform Bitcoin and take market share in general. Uh, so Ethereum is at, wow, right now in that chart, it's at 13,000. Let's see what it's currently. Okay, so Ethereum currently at 13,000, right? But this is not looking very good. As you can see, we 
broke out of the resistance and we literally hit the top of um, what, have, what, what we tested on the false breakout back in December. And then we, uh, we're we now trading uh, below that. So this is not what you want to see. You want to see this just break through, break over the top of these two candles and then consolidate for around a week or two and then break up. And if we are able to do that, I can see Ethereum testing 15,000 or 1,500. Um, so this is the uh, SPY 500, so the market index for traditional equities. And uh, so we have one, so a couple important things to watch out for this year is um, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell will be speaking this week, as well as we'll have inflation data for on Thursday. Um, those are uh, two very important things to watch out for. So the inflation data in the past couple of months has uh, not really affected the market too much. It has, so this this big candle right here was when the inflation data came out and it came out to be basically inflation has uh, went down more than expected. So the market gapped up, but this time around, I could see the market basically do another fake out. Even if inflation data is uh, good, we are now, we could see a gap up in the traditional market, uh, equities market, which could, let's say, maybe cause Ethereum to do some kind of false breakout again, like let's say a breakout, but then immediately close uh, under resistance. So that'd be a fake out, for example, over here. Um, so why do we ex expect this? So I expect if CPI numbers are bad, inflation is going up again, obviously bad for the market, market goes down, uh, the Fed will raise interest rates higher. However, if the inflation data is good, um, we could, that probably isn't going to do too much for the market because inflation was already trending down. So even if inflation keeps on trending down, we could see a small pop, but then I would, uh, expect the market to close lower. It would be more of a bull trap than the start of a rally because uh, we're now, like I said before, we're focused more on um, corporate earnings, unemployment rate, and um, and consumer spending. So inflation, while it is important, it has been trending down. So if we don't get too crazy of a surprise, uh, no matter what, I believe this is a, a opportunity to go short. Uh, and uh, just random coin Solana over here. I talked about this coin back in a couple months ago. I said if it broke 12, uh, the coin has a very low liquidity and will probably fall uh, pretty quickly. And uh, when we broke 12, we did reach $8. What is that, like a 30% decrease? However, um, Vitalik tweeted that Solana um, with will probably survive and has a good ecosystem of developers and that kind of pumped the market and of course causing a short squeeze as you can see uh solana pumped from nine dollars to sixteen dollars which is it almost they almost doubled 100 percent increase um for solana i would say this is still a short candidate but only short this when uh when you actually when you see some type of uh breakout fail because there's a lot of shorts trapped in this coin, uh, especially from the whole FTX drama from 35 down to 12. AI has been shorted a lot already, but for this coin, I would just um, be careful of uh, bear traps and uh, you could get liquidated very quickly if uh, there's a big rally to the upside. So I would uh, be looking to short around $20 if there's a false breakout. And that's it, that's it from me. Is there any questions? Cool. So you're muted. Yeah, is there any more questions, guys? Oh, 
Um, so there's uh, one more question. Um, when will you implement crypto certification courses? Uh, I'm not sure what crypto certification courses yeah. are. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, can you explain it? Um, so for trading, etc., to become qualified, um, do you mean uh, the broker that, that, like, um, I, I, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure either. <laughs> for trading, we don't have certification courses, yeah. And Vlad said, how often are these sessions? Uh, depending on interest, we could be hosting these sessions, just going over the market every week, depending on the interest of you guys. So, you know, if we get good feedback, we can definitely host these weekly. Oh, he said, um, um, similar to what brokers get. Um, I'm wondering, we don't have, are you, yeah, oh, okay. We don't, we don't have certification courses. Unless you're talking about us as a company, we can, um, yeah, we can get a broker dealer license, but we don't have like consumer, we don't have consumer certification courses. Oh, That's okay. Cool. He said um, a lot of exchanges got a learning academy, but no certification in the end. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we don't have that in the pipelines right now, but I mean, if there's interest, we could do that. We could definitely do that, a certification for uh, learning how to trade using trading bonds, but um, yeah, currently, currently we do not have that. We don't know if there's a, we didn't know that was like a, I don't know if a lot of people are asking for certification. That's pretty interesting. Uh, options trading bot. So there is a options trading bot because um, we our options trading bot basically automates you placing your orders. So for example, the flying wheel is technically an options bot. And then we have a uh, buy the dip bot. Uh, I can just show. Show my screen. Share my screen right here. So, for example, if you go to earn and you go to structured and then you go to auto invest, these are technically options trading bots because um, the, the, uh, instead of you placing your order over and over again, our bot will automate that for you. For example, the buy the BTC by the bot. Uh, if you use pro mode, you can say it's kind of, it kind of acts like a DCA bot almost. So let's say prices are seventeen thousand right now, and I want to be I want to buy Bitcoin when prices drop ten percent. So when prices drop to uh, fifteen thousand five hundred, so I'll just set uh, a ten percent drop, and then I want to set how much um, how much my annual yield I want. I can set uh, let's say ten percent and longest period i want is let's say 30 days and then you just search and then it finds products for you and then you and then you can press buy and then this will just um basically do uh redo what you've done in these steps over and over again for you until your order gets executed Any more questions? Cool. Awesome. All right, cool. Awesome. Cool. Um, 
yeah. Thank you um, guys yeah, for so, coming. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. And uh, you know, if you guys uh, like these sessions, we can do these uh, weekly, just going over markets, technical analysis, trading strategies, trading recap. Uh, yeah, we can definitely do these weekly, just having a little community event with you guys. So yeah, thank you guys for coming and thank you for the questions. Hope you guys uh, learned something today and I uh, hope you guys have a nice rest of your week. Cool, and if you guys have questions, you can send it to Sia or you can just like email it. <laughs> you can email it yes. to yes. support and then they'll give it to me if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Yes, or we, you we can. Yes, or you can go to the uh, Telegram community to ask any questions there. Yeah, if you guys have good feedback, mm -hmm. bad feedback, whatever you guys want to hear, you can. Uh, should we drop an email or something in the chat? Sure. <laughs> Just uh, put your email or put my email yes. in the chat. You yes. guys can send us Here's... feedback to our emails. Here's or my contact email. support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a CS email. You guys can just send some uh, feedback to us. That'd be awesome too. And whatever you guys want our topics to be weekly, we can do a poll as well. Uh, we can just leave up the email for a little bit. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for coming. All right, I'm going to.